Welcome to another edition of Conversations with CASA, a monthly show that examines issues, trends, and resources in our, st in our state's child welfare system. Our show is produced by Texas CASA, and I'm your host, Vicki Spriggs. I'm also CEO of Texas CASA. My guest today is Karen Scott, CEO and founder of Care to Rock. We are recording as we have since the pandemic began from our respective homes. So please expect and know that anything could happen during the course of the recording. So on that note, Karen, it's great to have you. And I'd like to spend just a little bit of time introducing you to, to our viewers. Karen, an attorney, was a juvenile prosecutor in Travis County and also a volunteer for CASA of Travis County. She decided to bring her two interests together, her work with volunteers and uh, her volunteer work with um, CASA and with young people generally, and her interest in music, which is an interesting combination. So she started pairing children with musicians and it organically turned into a nonprofit that currently exists today named Kids in a New Group. But she wanted to go bigger. And so I'm going to now ask you, Karen, as I say welcome again, to tell us how you got to Care to Rock and what was the thought process behind it? Thanks, Vicki. It's great to be talking to you today. And um, sorry it's through Zoom, but it's, it's great to connect nonetheless. Um, and you know, the idea for Care to Rock was just noticing the need in the community of after running a nonprofit that, like you said, paired youth and foster care with musicians, noticing that I had a lot of people asking, you know, what are there, are there other opportunities for music lessons for my kids? And, you know, do you know music teachers? So I noticed that need. And then I also noticed that we couldn't serve all the kids in Travis County that we wanted to if they moved or if something happened with their music teacher, then that mentoring relationship stopped. And so the idea with Care to Rock was combining um, all those things together where people wanted great music lessons. I wanted to be able to offer free lessons to youth in foster care, teachers who volunteered for me um, we're also looking for good paying jobs. And so Care to Rock has kind of brought all those things together in one platform where customers can pay for lessons and take with great vetted teachers online. These same teachers volunteer for youth and foster care. And it can be anywhere in the country. So we've partnered with CASA um, all across the country and are uh, always asking for new uh, students in foster care to come take online with us for free. And our teachers still get to bring that volunteer experience to the community um, and while also getting paying students as well. So it, it just kind of served all those needs. I, I just <clears throat> wanna commend you again um, for a number of things. One, for keeping children in care in mind and recognizing that they do move a lot and so many times something they start in one location is left behind as they go to another. Um, and that continuity is important. So thank you for that. And then I want to thank you also, because I think you're a tremendous role model for young ladies, um, to show them that you can take your passions and your commitments and blend them all together to make them work for the greater good. So thank you for that as well. Um, I just think that you have really you, you took things that looked like didn't connect and made them connect. It actually showed how they connect. Technology, music, mentorship, work with foster children, balancing the profit, uh, the paying and the non-paying, being able to serve that, that bigger arena. Can you talk about how um, music mentorship can make a difference in the life of a child? Yeah, I mean, we had seen so many great results with music mentorship through my work in the nonprofit community where we saw 100% of kids graduating high school that were in our program. Um, and not necessarily just because they were in music lessons, but um, foster parents that showed an interest in bringing 
that kind of dedication and ability to their kids really showed it just made a difference all around for the children to be and also to have that connection of a mentor that was there for them that wasn't a court ordered relationship but was just a real relationship and there were a lot of hurdles in making that work from the beginning it you know it was much more difficult than i thought because of course the safety of the kids is paramount and making sure that we can provide a safe mentoring relationship. But once we figured that out, we just saw great results. Kids really felt like rock stars being a, a part of our program and really felt like, I know kids in the community that have close relationships with their teachers from 10 years ago. Um, there's kids in the community that were, um, their music teachers were considering becoming adoptive parents. These were close relationships and a lot of times youth in foster care don't get that kind of close relationship, unfortunately. And I think we need to work harder in the private sector too to help foster those close relationships because it really can make a difference in outcomes and just in the happiness um, goal setting. And uh, we, you know, when a child can earn an instrument or earn a guitar and learn how to play it, and that's a very powerful thing. I even saw kids moving out of group homes that um, here in Austin, when they left the group home, you could see the cards that all the other children had written them and they were all about what a rock star they were because they saw them playing their guitar. And so those kind of things really uh, can have a lot of impact, uh, more than you would even guess, more than I would have guessed going into it. And also there is a neuroscience aspect to it where that kids that have faced abuse, music can actually rewire those neural connections in a good way. And so there's, there's a, a, a mentoring aspect, but there's also a scientific aspect to it as to why I think you see such great outcomes for kids that have been exposed to music lessons that are in the foster care system. Oh, amazing. You, you touched on something. Um, you talked about some of the obstacles you had to overcome to create this. Um, and I know that a CASA volunteer watching right now is probably thinking, oh my goodness, how do they assure that the musician they've paired that child with is safe, is a credible um, uh, mentor for a child? How do we trust our child with that person? Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, we always had, as you mentioned in the beginning, you know, I'm a former uh, juvenile prosecutor and, and that's what showed me, you know, how many kids were just unfairly put into the foster care system. Um, and so safety has always been a part of my mindset, you know, seeing what can happen with kids in foster care. So we have, you know, multiple ways of keeping our kids safe. We, all of our teachers are vetted, background checked, interviewed by myself or our staff, um, reference checked, but also we um, record our lessons from our youth in foster care and archive those. Um, and we also, you know, tell foster parents to be there, be home when they're taking their lesson. So we have multiple um, ways of making sure that our teachers are safe, our students are safe, and that there's additional eyes to make sure, um, you know, that that they can the foster parents or guardians can feel confident that the that these teachers and this experience is going to be a safe one for the kids involved. Super. Thank you. So you've got this, um, and you talked about this before, you, you, you've, you've referenced giving back to the community a couple of times. So why is it important for you and others at Care to Rock to give back to your community? Um, I think this is something that I think is, you know, overlooked by so many people. And of course, I, this is what, one reason I've always loved CASA and the work that CASA does is so valuable. Um, I think, you know, we all have a responsibility to give back to the community. This, this is uh, what makes life worth living is knowing that we're not just looking out for ourselves, but we're looking out for our most vulnerable in the community. And I also see what amazing kids that are in the foster care system and how much potential they have. And I think that, you know, if more people saw that, 
that would maybe help move the needle on some of these issues that we're facing um, in the foster care system. But it's just a responsibility that I think we all share. And it has been really challenging um, launching a business that is not just profit motivated. That is way more challenging than I ever thought. Um, you know, it is a daily t challenge because uh, if it's a social enterprise business like what we have, you know, you're not treated as a nonprofit. So you also have to have business goals in mind. Um, and that's, that is a harder thing than I thought. But ultimately, I feel like if more businesses could be social impact or social enterprise driven, we could make a lot of differences across a lot of different sectors and, and in our communities. So uh, social impact, um, you, um, you attended the Stanford University, what was it, social impact leadership school or something to that effect? Can you talk about that? Because it, it yes. seemed like reading your bio that that kind of really helped you begin to think on a bigger scale as it relates to this initiative. A hundred percent, you're, you're hundred percent right. The executive program for Social entrepreneurs I did many years ago before I'd even started Care to Rock. At the time, I was very involved just in the nonprofit community. And I really did believe and still do believe that there is so much potential um, for businesses to be impact driven instead of just uh, nonprofits being impact driven and businesses being profit driven. I felt like there's a real place where they meet in the middle. And Stanford has a program where that's what they're in there were people from all over the world that came to that program and they really help you with design thinking and thinking about how can we achieve these goals that we have for our nonprofits or what kind of goals we're looking for how can we achieve them on a bigger scale and a lot of times um, cost has done a great job of being a, a, a national organization but for many smaller nonprofits scaling is really hard uh, scaling out of your local communities. So that was what led me to Care to Rock, thinking how can I think bigger, bring more impact across the country, not just in my own community, and how can I fill that need? So that Stanford program was a big step toward realizing like, can I make that happen? Super, thank you. And again, in making it happen, you, and I said it before, you wedded these interests, you leveraged technology, to bring um, musicians and children together and make it so that it endures through the moves. Um, and again, leveraging the those who can pay um, and those who can't um, and just making all that work. And again, just, just phenomenal, phenomenal. You. <laughs> um, yeah, your program is absolutely phenomenal and your thinking behind it is phenomenal. I love the give back attitude. I love the, um, the bigger community aspect of giving back. Um, and then the, the way you really thought it through. And it's so interesting because I know your legal background still has a function day to day in all of this to make in making sure the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. So you are really bringing your whole self into Care to Rock. And so on behalf of the CASA community and all those children who are benefiting from what you're doing, thank you for that. Um, where can our audience go to learn more about Care to Rock? And if you are a foster parent, if someone is a foster parent watching, how do they go about getting their foster child signed up uh, for music lessons through Care to Rock? Thanks for that, Vicki. That is, um, so the easiest way is to go to caretorock.com and it's C-A-R-E, the number two, R-O-C-K.com. If you're a foster parent or a guardian, you're gonna wanna go to our website, go to our contact us page. And on the right side of our contact us page, you'll see an intake form and you can fill out that form. It'll have all the needed information to get that application to us and we'll start working on placing your child with the right uh, teacher. The process does take um, a little bit of time, but it's relatively easy that one thing that we do say is if you need a laptop for your child and you're in Texas, you can get that through the Computers for CASA program and put that request in um, as well to get that, that might be a, a 
kind of spur kids on that are excited about music lessons but need to get that laptop first because our lessons are all online, which is convenient during COVID. Um, they're all online, so you do need to make sure that your child is going to have access to Wi-Fi. We do have other solutions uh, sometimes if you know all else fails, but that the child has access to Wi-Fi, has access to a laptop. Um, sometimes we can work with the phone, but a laptop's preferable. And we can also try to get instruments or help give you ideas about ways to get instruments for your child in foster care. Um, and frequently I can sometimes get them myself depending on where your child is. So the easiest thing to do is just go to caretorock.com, go to head over to our contact us page, click that intake link, and then we will, we will get your, get the process started. Super, super. Karen, thank you again on so many levels for everything you're doing. And I thank you again for agreeing to be a guest to share Care to Rock with our viewers. Thank you so much. Thank, and I want to, thank you, Vicki. It was a pleasure to, to tell you guys more. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to this edition of Conversations with CASA. We'll see you next time.